So, I would like to dispel this idea that supply and demand is some kind of universal law, like gravity or, or something that arises out of necessity. Uh, it's not. It just isn't. It's one of several methods that can be employed in order to reach something close to consensus about price. It's something that we use, it's a method we use for determining price, okay? And to a large extent, that's how the market works. So a market mechanism uses supply and demand for determining price, okay? Uh, we understand that, all right? But that's only one way. The, there's other ways of determining price. There's negotiations, okay? Uh, maybe between two people where they haggle over the price. Maybe uh, you're haggling over the price of a car, for example. And you, each one has information <laughs> that they can use against the other person in, in determining the price, okay? Um, so there's that aspect of it as well. Uh, it's possible also uh, Soviet-style central planning to do price fixing, you know, which we all agree is probably not a very good idea because it failed miserably in the Soviet Union, all right? Um, but it's only one out of many different processes that can be used for determining the price of something. Now, I think it's worthwhile to talk about subjective and objective value. I think it's worthwhile... Uh, talking about and not just trying to wish them out of existence. I think subjective value is something that is um, closely associated with psychology and there's a lot we're finding out about psychology and a lot we can state about subjective value and it helps us build a model of the typical consumer. We want to understand how people function within an economy and understanding their subjective values is very important and in order to do that we need to understand psychology. I think it's important to understand how people arrive at certain decisions, okay? And it's not, it's not the rational way that, you know, the classical economics would, would have you believe. It's, it's far more complex in some ways and far more simple in others, okay? Um, the other thing, the objective uh, wealth or objective measure of value, I think that price is a pretty good measure of value, objective measure of value. And, and it's because it's something that's arrived at through some process that attempts to approximate consensus, okay? When it's done well, all right? When it's done well, people feel as though the price is reasonably fair on for all parties okay so that's that's what supply and demand can do in a lot of cases uh, not in all cases especially not when um, producers uh, collude to do their own price fixing okay price fixing is not something that only governments do monopolies also price fix so there's lots of different ways of so of overriding supply and demand or negotiations because you have the power to set your own price. And monopolies do this and uh, cartels do this. And there are various ways of doing that, uh, just fixing the price. And we all agree that price fixing is bad. <laughs> the question is, what do you do to, to stop it, all right? Um, so I, I think that objective value uh, as measured by price is something worth talking about and it's, and it's something that can be theorized about. I don't think we need to wish it out of existence and replace it by this vague idea that everything is set by price and by the laws of supply and demand. I don't think so at all. I think supply and demand is not a law. It's only one process out of many that can be used for setting prices and that the price is as close as we can make it to be an objective measure of value and I think that's very important to remember. Anyways, that's all I want to say for this video. That's all. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.